And I know this issue came up recently or got a lot of attention recently when you tried to give some advice to Miley Cyrus in the initial letter that you wrote, the topic of the way the music business prostitutes young female artists was part of that letter. And I was wondering if there was a moment in your own life where you learned that the music business was not on your side and that you had to look Oh, you know it yourself. every single day of your life. The music business is a corrupt, a spiritually corrupt arena. It's full of nothing but vampires and pimps, honestly. And you couldn't understand it if you, unless you were in it. And the only way to survive it is love music. Um, so I've known it all along. But I think what was more important, really, that, that came out of the Miley thing was this this issue of con being able to now conversate about, you know, how mental health and, and human rights is now. So I think she was actually very helpful. I think the two of us, without meaning to, did quite a good job in terms of creating a conversation about something really, really important. You know? So what's the role of religion in your life today? Uh, I am interested in the study of all religions. I've always been interested in studying religion, but I see religion and God as two separate things. So I guess I see music as a priesthood, that that would be how I relate to, you know, what's the way to put it? I, I would have a very strong relationship with what I prefer to call the Holy Spirit because it lifts it from any um, particular religion. What do you think of the new pope? I, I, I'm, I'm not interested so much in all of that anymore because the, the well, the appropriate thing took place, which was that the other guy resigned. So I don't really have to take any more interest in it. As far as I know, this dude has, the new dude has nothing to do with covering up very important things. So I don't concern myself. So you mentioned you're, you know, you're so outspoken about uh, the way that we talk about mental illness. And mm. how do you feel that your message is being received by people? Well, it's not a question of my message. I think I think uh, it's a general world message now. My particular um, grief, if you like, is with uh, the media in particular, that I think how the media discuss and portray and diagnose, indeed, without qualification, um, mental health or mental illness is, is a human rights issue. Um, I'll give you just one example. Um, what, uh, there's a dreadful practice going on in this country at the moment, which is a complete breach of human and civil rights. Uh, paparazzi lynching is what I call it. Young celebrities, young female celebrities, whether it's Britney or Amanda Bynes or, or Lindsay Lohan or anyone who has either been diagnosed with an illness or is perceived by people to have a mental illness. Um, lynching them in the streets, trying to get photos of them looking like they're having breakdowns, taking these pictures, selling them for tons of money in the newspapers, with, with derogatory words written under them about mental illness and about these women, and making a buffoonery and a mockery of them. Now that's obviously extremely wounding and dangerous for those young women, uh, because it doesn't stay on the page or stay on the screen, it translates down into how people treat you in your life. Unfortunately, there's such a stigma about mental illness or perceived mental illness that people are bullied and treated like sh frankly, and the illnesses are used as something with which to beat people um, in a manner that a physical illness wouldn't be. You couldn't go lynching with paparazzi girls who had broken legs and start writing about, you know, aren't these dreadful, awful people, let's have a great laugh at them because they have a broken leg. <laughs>